Have you ever experienced shoulder pain? Well, of course you have. Most people have at one point in their life experienced some bout of shoulder pain, whether they fell on it during a sport, whether they woke up with it, or it just started hurting without any uh, known reason. In this series of videos, we've talked about different conditions that can occur at the shoulder, but today I'm gonna to get a little bit more general. Hey, I'm Dr. Chris Govea with HealthFit Chiropractic. Today I wanna to talk about just an overview of causes of shoulder pain, how, are, how we, from a high level, diagnose or classify what could be going on with your injury, uh, to better understand shoulder pain, as uh, many of us deal with it. In fact, most of us at one point or another have. Shoulder pain can come in many different forms. Some things that people are much more familiar with are rotator cuff tears, tendonitis, or, or strains. Um, in other conditions, we have subacromial impingement, where there's pain on the front of the shoulder as you're lifting your arm up. We talked about that in another video. In other uh, situations, we actually have more malicious pathology. For example, everyone's heard about left shoulder pain with a heart attack. We're gonna talk about how to differentiate those different things, when to be concerned, and when not to be concerned. So we'll take you through an evaluation process to help classify these different types of conditions and what we would look for if you come into our office today for an evaluation of shoulder pain. We're talking about a general overview of shoulder pain today. So the most important thing with any condition, but even specifically shoulder pain, is what the history tells us. So shoulder pain can go in so many different directions. Taking a really clear history is important. For example, we talked about some of the more malicious things that can lead to shoulder issues, such as you know heart attack. Everyone's heard that left shoulder could be a sign of a heart attack. Well, that's much more common in males than females. It's not necessarily uh, a guarantee if you have shoulder pain and you're a little bit older and you're a smoker, you're having a heart attack, but of course those things influence it. One of the best ways to tell or whether you, what should raise concern is, let's say you're doing something that doesn't involve the shoulder at all, but it's cardiovascular. You're going for a run and all of a sudden your shoulder really starts to ache. You might rationalize it to yourself as, well, you know, it's got jostled a little bit and that may be true, but that should raise concerns. We're not actually using the shoulder, we're cardiovascularly exerting ourselves and all of a sudden we have shoulder pain. We should be a little bit more concerned of uh, you know, potential heart attack or cardiovascular involvement. These things are rare, but it's important to think about. For example, on the other side, if you have pain in the right shoulder, say after a really fatty meal, you just went out for some fried chicken and all of a sudden you have really, uh, really bad pain in the right shoulder and you haven't had any, anything that would have caused that, you can think about gallbladder. There's gallbladder referral patterns that go up to that right shoulder as well. So those are things in the history that we try and dig out, especially when it's not an obvious trauma. You fell on it while you were in a sport or something like that. Now, the most common conditions are gonna be more rotator cuff injuries, subacromial impingement. Like I said before, we did a video on that, but we'll talk about it a little bit today as well. But we have to diagnose those to be able to manage them appropriately. For example, in a subacromial impingement, we're gonna see that the pain is gonna be right in the front here. Typically, when that patient is lifting their arm up like this, they'll feel a bit of a pinching sensation. Um, and one of my favorite ways to test if we think that's an involvement is I'll actually support that shoulder. When we come up through here, if that relieves the pain, we're actually opening up that subacromial space and we're allowing that, uh, that muscle tendon to slide through clearer and so it actually should relieve it if it's a true subacromial impingement. Now, rotator cuff injuries are the most common, whether it's actually a full, full tear, whether it is a sprain, uh, or sorry, not a sprain, but a strain of that muscle, um, we have to differentiate that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the rotator cuff muscles testing. So we're gonna come out here and I'm just gonna start with a light pressure here, see if he has strength at all, um, and if he has any pain with it. If he's okay there, we might come out to a longer lever here and do the same thing. This is testing for that supraspinatus. That's one of the most common muscles to actually be injured uh, in the rotator cuff. The next one, is we're gonna have him here, and he's going to actually externally rotate, so go ahead. And we're really challenging the infraspinatus here, um, and the teres minor. Those are the two uh, external rotators of the shoulder. They're really important. That could cause pain, or if I notice weakness when I compared it to his good arm, that's, uh, that's a sign that those could be involved as well. The next one that we're looking at is the subscapularis. That's the internal rotator of the shoulder. Uh, and what makes that muscle unique is it's the only internal rotator of the shoulder, or the primary, uh, primary one. And it has different muscle fibers. They're, the ones on the bottom and the ones on top actually react differently. So in order to test that, we have to test them in both positions. The first thing I'm gonna have Hermias do is he's actually gonna push against his stomach against my resistance. So we're challenging different muscle fibers. Next, we're gonna come up on a higher angle, same thing again, he's gonna resist me. Now if that was weak and he just kinda of let it go there for me, so I let it go and it kinda of came all the way out like that, we might be more concerned about a subscapularis tear or just a strain. 
The final test that I like to do for rotator cuff is I have him actually bring his hand behind his back here, and I just ask to see if he can lift his hand off of his back. Ermias does a good job with this, but when we have injuries, either it will just twitch and it won't move, or they'll find a way to move it. They'll like, they'll flex their arm, they'll extend their arm down, they'll do something to just try and lift it off their back, but that's because they're actually guarding and trying to protect that muscle. So it's really important that we, we figure out exactly which rotator cuff muscle is injured in the different conditions. Once we determine that, there's a lot of different treatment things that are, treatment modalities that are available to us. One of the most important ones is we use ART all the time. We've talked about it in the past, but there's different muscular releases that can actually help those tissues repair. So we're gonna do one for the super spinatus right now. So Hermias is gonna come up here. He's gonna hold his arm right about there. We're gonna contact that muscle and I'm gonna have him just bring his arm behind his back slowly. And now somebody who has a torn supraspinatus or a strained supraspinatus, this may be painful. They may not get full range of motion and that's okay, but we'll just do exactly what they can tolerate. Good. And one more. Good. Okay. Next, I'm going to have him lay on, the, lay on his back. This is probably one of the most useful ART releases that we do. So if we think about this uh, subscapularis, it sits, if this is your shoulder blade, this is your back, it sits on the front of your shoulder blade. So the way that we actually access that is through the armpit here. This is not a fun one, but it's really, really effective. So I'll have our mice just push on his stomach there to activate the muscle, good, and now let it relax. When I have the contact there, we're gonna go through a range of motion just like this to help release it. This can take tension out of the muscle, it creates some blood flow to the area, and it provides an ability for that muscle to start to heal a little bit better. And we'll go through different ranges there. We have a lot of different uh, moves that we can do on, uh, on all these muscles. We'll treat the structures around it. We wanna make sure that that shoulder blade's moving. If you sit up again for me, the shoulder blade doesn't move very well or that scapula doesn't move very well. So what we can do is I'll have him here. And what I'm doing with this hand is I'm actually helping that shoulder blade rotate upwards. And this can be really important for immobilization as well, especially with these types of injuries. What we wanna do from there is we wanna help provide the patient an ability to take care of it at home. Really important is actually starting to load that muscle as soon as it's tolerable. And so everyone thinks about a muscular contraction is going from point A to point B. Well, it, sometimes what we wanna do is we just wanna activate the muscle without actually moving it. So this is called an isometric contraction. Um, to do that for uh, let's call it the external rotators or the posterior rotator cuff. Uh, we would have him actually just meet my resistance just like this. This will be weak in somebody with an injury, but it's a really good way to start loading it. We can do this for about 10 seconds and relax and we'll do another. And what's interesting about this is not only are we starting to actually strengthen that muscle, but there's actually some research that shows that there's a bit of a pain gating factor. So when you actually activate the muscle, it can help actually dull the pain down a little bit. So this is something that our patients can do at home, whether it's just having their arm up against a wall, pushing inwards and outwards, just like that. This is where we start them. We get them to take it home so they could do this every single day. That muscle doesn't atrophy as much and it's a really good way to maintain the progress that we, get, uh, we build in office. And then we'll progress to some of the next stuff that we're gonna show you um, in terms of their treatment to make it a little bit more interesting once they're through that really initial acute inflammatory phase. Okay, with almost every shoulder injury, one of the most important things we have to target is actually the scapular stabilizers. So the scapula sits here, it's your shoulder blade, and what happens is it's basically a floating bone. It's attached by like, it's like 16 or 17 muscles, I can't remember exactly, um, but the muscles at the top tend to be tighter and the muscles at the bottom tend to be weaker. And so we wanna train the position of it so that way that the shoulder joint functions optimally. So one of the best ways to do this is, um, it's actually a DNS position, which is dynamic neuromuscular stabilization. It's a fancy way to describe an exercise technique that mimics actual developmental patterns. So what we're gonna do with this position is Hermias is gonna have his elbows up by his ears. He's going to set his shoulder blades back and I'm gonna have him push the table away and lift his upper back through his shoulder blades. So go ahead and lift up. Good, and I'm gonna have him try and push a little bit more through, just like that. So now these shoulder blades are working really, really hard. And I'm actually gonna challenge his shoulder blades pushing up and have him meet my resistance. This is gonna be really important for him to learn how to depress his shoulder blades and hold it and create that stability. This is a great exercise. You can see he's already starting to shake. It doesn't take much. It seems really simple, but it's super effective. 
The next one I'm going to have him do targets all the uh, rotator cuff muscles. And so what we'll do is we'll have you slide up a little bit so that your chest is just hanging off the edge of the table. We call these field goals. Going to have him focus on keeping that scapular stability. So set him right there. You're going to bring your elbows up. So with them bent at 90 and down here. So this is your starting position. Then he's going to rotate and then reach forward. And then come back slowly, rotate down, and repeat. And so what he has to do here is he really has to stabilize his shoulder blades. He's going to be externally rotating. He's going to be internally rotating. He's going to be working all those different rotator cuff muscles. Now, this is a much more advanced exercise. You're not going to go from isometrics to this, but this is a great exercise for shoulder health, injury prevention, and injury recovery at a certain stage in your treatment plan. Good worker. So if you're experiencing any type of shoulder pain, it doesn't matter whether you think it's a rotator cuff, whether you think it's an impingement, whether you're worried it's coming from the neck, give us a call at 561-997-8898. Get a same day appointment with one of our chiropractic physicians to help evaluate that and put your mind at ease or get you the proper care that you need. We can handle almost all shoulder conditions and if it's something that's more serious that requires a referral, we'll get you squared away from that perspective as well.